So backing up your NAS to a, another Synology NAS. Because the last thing that you want is you've got one NAS and that's great. You've got a Synology NAS, you've got all your data on there. But then what happens if that NAS dies, you lose some data by accident, you can't get it back because you don't have backups in place. I've got two NASs, as I said, I've got a four bay, I've got a DS920 plus, and I've also got a DS1621 plus. And we're gonna be doing the backups from our 920 plus over to our DS1621, actually setting up a job to either do it manually, so you can do it manually, or you can automate the whole process and it just does the backups for you. Hey, before we do get into this, you're watching this on the YouTube machine and thank you for stopping by. Appreciate you stopping by, but a whole bunch of you are not actually subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, please do click on that button on the bell. I release videos every week on all things tech, including Synology, but a lot of other stuff on tech as well. All right, now let's log into our Synology NAS. So the first thing to do is of course, log into your two NASs. Now here I've got my first NAS. This is at IP address 49. This NAS is called Prod NAS, as you can see from the name right here. That's the server name. Prod NAS is the production NAS. And we're gonna be backing that up to this second NAS, which is at IP address of 50, and it's called Aguero NAS. Now what we're gonna to need to do is in our production NAS, so this is the source NAS, you wanna actually go and download some software that allows you to go and do some backups of the data to the alternate NAS. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna go into our package center and we're gonna look for Hyper. You wanna go ahead and install, download Hyper Backup. And then once it's there, you can select Open. On your second NAS, on the actual destination NAS, so where you want the backups to go to, you're also gonna go into the package center. Here we are in our second NAS. I'm gonna go into here and type in Hyper again. And now what we wanna do is install Hyper Backup Vault. Essentially, this NAS will become the vault, the destination location, where all of your backups are running into. So go ahead and install and download, and you can just go ahead and open that up. And that is now open, and it's just waiting for some activity between those two. From within here, we've got a few different options, but the one that we're gonna select is Remote NAS Device. We're of course going to Remote Service. We're gonna enter in the IP address of my destination NAS, which of course is the IP address here. This is the port and we're gonna click on login. Okay, so that has now prompted me to log in to my destination NAS. And this is good because it actually has established a connection. So now log in with credentials that have got administrator rights. We now have to select the shared folder. Now this is the destination folder of where you want your backups to go to. Now you see that I've already created a folder in here or a shared folder called backups. Now if you don't have anything like this, Go back into your destination NAS. You can create a brand new one by going into the control panel, shared folder, and create a brand new shared folder right in here. Give it a relevant name and relevant permissions. Of course, the permissions will need to be the permissions that are needed to be able to log into it. But essentially, this is gonna be the location where all of our backups are gonna be going into. But we're now gonna go back into our source NAS, so our production NAS, and it's gonna go into backups and it's gonna create a directory called prod NAS one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna call this prod NAS underscore backup, create the backup task, next. Now you select what data do you actually want to backup over. You could backup the entire volume or you could backup specific shared folders or specific folders within your shared folder. Of course, you wanna make sure that the destination location has enough capacity to be able to do the backups because if this is smaller than your source, you're gonna have trouble backing everything up. So make sure you've got enough space on that destination NAS. So I just wanna back up some music files that I've actually been working on. Under here, I've got a logic folder and that's what I'm gonna be copying. But of course you select all the files, all the folders that you actually want to back up. Next, do you wanna back up any applications? So it's not just the actual files and folders, but any apps that you may actually have configured as well, as well as some of the settings of that application. We'll back up just one application here called antivirus and select next. Now this is the task name. Now what do you actually wanna call this particular task? So we've already selected the source and the destination. What do you wanna call this job that you are creating? So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say it's my backup job daily. Now we want to enable a backup schedule. So make sure that that is ticked. And now we actually specify how often do you want it to run? So you can make it run daily, weekend, weekdays, or select specific days of the week. Now in my case, I want it to run Monday through to Friday. I'm not concerned about Sunday and Saturday because I'm just not gonna be changing 
during those days. So just Monday to Friday will be fine. And the time that you want it to run, we want to kick off our job 9.30 p.m. every single night. This feature, Integrity Check, is really, really cool. It actually lets you check the backup job to make sure that it is correct, that it's backed up correctly, that it can be restored. So you can actually set this to run one specific day. There are some other settings here as well if you do want to go through each of these. I would recommend keeping everything as standardized. You want to get enabled notifications. You want to compress your data. And we're going to select Next. Backup rotation essentially is the retention policy for your backups. So how many versions of that backup job do you wanna run? If you remember, if we just click on back, this is gonna run every single day of the week. So do you want to keep Monday's backup, Tuesday backup, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday's backup? And then the following week, again, another copy of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, et cetera, et cetera. What's gonna happen is your NAS will fill up. So you do you really actually want to keep every single day's worth of backup or do you want to delete earlier versions? So you could enable this. I recommend that you do enable this because you don't want to have all of your backups for every single day kept forever. You want to have some sort of a smart retention policy in place on how often you want backups to take place, but also how often you want the old backups to be deleted. You could actually set right here from the earliest version. You could also customize your retention from the earliest one month, one day, how many versions, how many intervals you want to be able to run, and then how many numbers of the versions do you want to actually keep? At the moment it's 256, which is quite a lot, and that's gonna require a lot of files. So maybe for my purposes, I only want to keep my daily backups for 30 days. So I'm gonna select 30 days and then selecting from the earliest versions, done. It will then ask me, do I want to run that backup job now? You can say yes, or you can let it kick off at that scheduled time. The backup job will now kick off. Bit of a summary on what's going on at the target. Our new destination NAS is online here. It's IP addresses, the location that we're gonna be backing it up to. We can actually now go into our destination NAS. Remember it's going into backups right here and you'll see there's actually a new prod nas underscore backup dot hbk file. hbk, of course, standing for hyper backup. That is the extension that is used for our backups. Of course, it'll take a bit of time depending on how much files you've got. With the backup job successful, you can then easily do a restore down the track by clicking on the restore button over here, selecting data. Here is our backup daily job, the task that we've created, and then the actual restoration of when you want to be able to restore the data from. So backups done from one to the other. Why don't you let us know whether this worked for you? And also before you do finish, before you do finish, remember to click on that subscription button and on the bell, you're watching this on YouTube. So please do subscribe. It helps me to know that you are following and you enjoy my content and helps me to release better videos in future. But that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will see you next time.